Welcome to part three. So, so far we've been using the, the map and we've been orientating ourselves on the ground by setting it. And we're here in the village of Dockray in Cumbria. You can see the telephone box down there, the bottom. And we're heading up this hill here, Watermillet Column. Common. <laughs> so I can set the map using the local features around me and that's orientated the right way. But there's a, a more reliable and, and, and better way than using local features. That's a, a good way to do it, but using the compass will get you right. So before we get into this video, let's discuss parts of a compass. It might look very technical and complicated at first, but it's really not. This is a silver base plate compass, and of course it has a base plate, and it has some simple scale markings along the side that correspond to different scale maps, and a millimeter measuring ruler along the top there. And on the last video, we discussed use of these scales that correspond to the scale of your map to measure distance on the map. Very important to remember is this part. This is the direction of travel arrow. And generally, you're going to be holding this always facing away from you unless you're taking a bearing on a map. There's a handy magnifying lens there for looking at detail on the map. And this part, the bezel, rotates. It's also fluid filled to give some damping on the compass. Now you'll see that there are simple points of the compass marked on this north, south, east, and west, or Naughty Elephants Squirt Water and also the 360 degree bezel is of course split into 360 degree increments. So using north, east, south and west wouldn't give us very accurate bearings because it's just four points. So we need these uh, points of 360 degrees to be able to take an accurate bearing. And the other important things to remember is the orientation lines underneath that you can see there move with the bezel and so does that wider orientation arrow just there and people will often call that the shed there underneath it looks a little bit like a, a shed shape and often when you're using the compass what you need to do is put red in the shed so the red north needle gets put into the shed. So that's the basic parts of, parts of the compass. We want to be following this path along here. And the first thing I want to do is orientate the map using the compass. So if I get the bearing needle pointing to north, line it up with the grid lines on the, on the map, and then rotate the map the right way. Oh, something seriously wrong here. Interesting there, thought something was going wrong. Uh, this compass, it's a, the silver one with the green bezel, it's a relatively new compass, but it's actually flipped pol polarity and the north needle is facing south. So it's advisable to car always carry a spare, and I'm glad that I have. And using that skill of orientating the map on the ground has just proved to be very important because I had a good sense of the way the map was pointing. But the actual, the compass was giving me 300, uh, 180 degrees the wrong way. So I'm going to put that in my pocket, not use that today, and uh, use this other one. So I've lined the edge of the compass along with the grid lines of the map and I've put the red needle in the 
bearing needle or the shed behind and that's that map set the right way now so this is water millet column up ahead water millet common the next thing I want to do is to make sure I'm following a correct uh, bearing on the map so what I'm going to do next is just place the map on the ground rotate the compass grid lines until they're lined with the grid lines on the map and I can read off here then my bearing which I make to be 212 degrees and then holding the compass flat I can follow that bearing and that's confirming my direction of travel as well so what's a good tip is to pick a landmark so you don't want to be constantly looking at the compass all the time pick a landmark ahead that's well in sight that's on the right bearing for instance that tuft of grass or actually my white dog <laughs> which will be moved <laughs> but that tuft of grass walk to that and then take another bearing and keep hopping from one to the other so now I've reached this clump of grass I'll recheck my bearing look up ahead I can see the line of a faint path but I know right up on the hillside there just below one of those nobbles there is where I want to be next and that's quite a good distance away and I can confidently walk to that point know that's on my bearing that's where the path will be and not worry too much about rechecking it in poor visibility what I would do is get one of my party to walk ahead on the right bearing me giving them directions left or right to an imaginary point then I'd ask them to stop and I would walk to them so you can even do that using two compasses and two people take the bearings so you walk to that person and they leap on their head or you can have a moving uh, line with both of you using the compass that works on that same bearing but for now I'm going to use landmarks to leapfrog to at each point little waypoints along the way so now we've reached a division in the path and we want to make sure that we're on the on the right path so I've set that bearing Joel do you remember how to hold the compass and how do you hold the compass flat nice and flat so I want you to have the direction arrow pointing away from you and I want you to turn your whole body to put red in the shed Okay, keep the direction pointing away from you. Right, so which path do you think we should take? Is it that one or that one? Bearing in mind the family have already set up on that one because I told them that was the way. But Joel's confirmed it with the compass, haven't you? That that's our right direction. Well done. Off you go. This taking a bearing on a feature has advantages when there's minor deviations in the path like we've got here. So we can go around that little twisty bit knowing that we're heading for that little gap up there confident that we're still en route and that's where the path goes eventually nice here it's Gow Barrow Fell here that's very popular that's just above Aero Force that's uh, above Alls Water which is down here so now we've reached a, a navigational decision. There's no real paths up to the summit. There's just a set of sheep trails. And we are at this uh, point along here. We can tell that because this black line here is this wall that's just there. And we're on this path that's just meeting it here. We want to be on, this, on the summit. So if we confirm that by orientating the map to north, our summit of watermelon column I can't say it, watermelon common is up here now that's quite a steep slope here so I'm going to suggest that we 
uh, contour north from this point and just get up this little gully bit here. But our original bearing that we took before still holds true, pointing directly to the summit. But we were starting to get lured by the path. But we need to just go that way a little bit and then and then left. Great! Are you ready? Dominique? Yeah! Joel ready? Yeah! <laughs> Sasha ready? Mm -hmm. Teen power. So just cutting across that short section north, we've come across this quad bike track that'll help us to take us to the summit. Now we're off our original bearing, so I've taken a new bearing, and that is 248 to the summit now. So it's all going great. So this is the summit of Watermill at Co Common and what a fantastic summit it is. That's looking out over towards Blencathra. Looking north towards Scotland. Great Mel Fell, Little Mel Fell, Go Barrow Fell. That's over towards the northern Pennines. There's Old Water. Looking out in the far distance where there's some rain there over towards the High Street Range. This is Place Fell here. And then we scooch up towards the Helvellyn Range. And there's Helvellyn with a little bit of snow on the summit just back there. So that's been a great walk. So we're going to cut to see how the Cubs get on. So You've already hopefully acquired your local map as we encourage you to do in step one and two. So go out and get yourself a compass. They're not massively expensive. Keep it with you on your local walks. Practice putting the red in the shed. Practice thinking about where north, east, south and west is. The common four cardinal points of the compass. And then think about those 360 degree bearings taking a bearing off the map, walking along it, and taking a bearing to a point and walk it towards it, walking towards it. Practice lots before you get out on the fells. It's been fairly easy navigating today, but it would be different in poor visibility. So practice lots. So thanks very much. Lunch time now. Oh, <laughs> usual dismantling in the sandwich so yeah thanks for watching great it's cub night we're cheating in parts of the compass and then we've got a route to do around the cemetery and a simple route card i haven't put the distance in yet but i want them to pace it and give it an, uh, an estimation so now we're showing them the parts of a compass So you always hold it, so that's the direction of travel arrow. Always hold it with that facing away from you. Unless you're putting it on a map and taking a bearing, you never need to change it from that. You always just kind of hold it that way facing away and then you just turn your whole body. If I wanted you to travel on the bearing 200 degrees, if you turn the bezel until 200 degrees is on the index line, Remember to hold the compass nice and flat, perhaps in one hand. And turn yourself until, the, until red is in the shed. And your shed on this one is those two little lines there. I'll tell you what. So, keep, hold the compass nice and flat. You always keep the direction of arrow travel facing towards you, and then you turn the bearing. You're still on bearing? Yeah, I've got it on the right bearing still. Okay. And it says I'm doing so a little tip, what you can do is when you take the bearing, you can look at what's down ahead of you, and then you can go, right, I know that that car is on the right bearing. You don't have to keep looking at the compass. You can just head for that car. The, the sun's just... 
I know it is. You can see the Cheviots over there. Right over there. That's the Cheviots, the Cheviot Hills there. Oh, yeah. Right in the distance. Does it say 325? Right, turn that until 325 is on that index line there. Okay, what's your description say for leg two? Right, you happy? Do you mind if I have a little check? I didn't do it. So 325 is there so hold it with the arrow facing away and then just turn it and so red is in the shed that's red there so you don't turn the compass you turn your whole body right what can you see down there and barry so off you go okay next six have you got your bearing yes right it's that way 325 degrees I'm in Jonas, but I'm not in He said 330 before. No, it's, it's a new, we're on leg two now. Oh. They're doing pretty good. Each exercise, the cubs, I thought, this is going to be too hard, you know, learning the bearings like this. But they've done all right, you know, some of them need a little bit more practice, but quite a few of them have done absolutely brilliantly, so I'm delighted. So they're following a simple rectangular course around the cemetery. So if I wait here, hopefully they'll come back to me. This is the church where we were married. It was our anniversary yesterday, which was 14 years. Brilliant. So it's pretty important to get it kind of like your bearing spot on. Because imagine if I was walking across a massive field and I took, or, a, or walking for about a mile, if I put my compass, what I thought was 155 degrees, and actually had it on 158, the further I walked, the further I'd be going wrong, wrong, wrong. Even a little, a couple of three degrees. Which way is it? Guessing his grave that way. <laughs> oh, guys, so go give me one fact about using a compass that you've learnt. Um, I learnt about the bearings and that you can move the, it round to match which bearing you want to go. But which way do you hold the compass? In the way that arrows point. Direction of our travel. Right, one more fact about using a compass. That you have to hold a compass flat or it doesn't, um, it, or the um, hands don't turn. Perfect. Um, that compass is a handy. Yeah. Anybody else? Um, when you um, are finding out where you go, what um, north, south, east, or west, or any other um, bearing, you should always make sure that the red arrow is in the two lines under the north. Or red in the shed. Brilliant. Subscribe to Bellman Day!